<laughs> to Die a Blonde by Dave Thackeray. Charlie, clearly a millennial, has been suppressing all day an urge to explode. She contemplated a dramatic exchange while a pair traversed the endless, monotonous corridors of the gallery. And despite her obvious displeasure at being dragged there, she still went ahead and bought the guidebook, forgetting that the creative community would have benefited a great deal more if she'd just put the money in the Perspex donation box. Because everyone knows books have a heavy cost to both the maker and our jungles. Charlie Stews and Simmers. She's suppressing her millennial angst, successfully ignoring Sandy, who is once again deflated after trying and characteristically failing to convey a largely incomprehensible point. Charlie decides she made a big mistake buying the guidebook and starts sighing. It's a very noisy sigh. We're bordering on a grunt but the girl lacking communication skills is unmoved by this clear display of displeasure. Charlie, far from an angel, has been pondering her forthcoming speech for some time, and that oratory is now primed and ready to be unloaded in the style of an Uzi at full tilt. She wipes the book free of mind juices, which may otherwise muddle the air that is about to be frothy with spittle, and lunacy of degrees previously not witnessed outside of Westminster. Charlie starts the countdown until the apocalyptic outburst. But in her head, the countdown. There's a reflection in our mostly off-camera rant-inducing cameo performer Sandy, who probably doesn't even have an equity card of the hostile vibes silently transmitted in her direction by the prone, slightly emo and bespectacled protagonist come anti-hero. Remember that time you were brunette and we were staying in that Moroccan Riyadh, says Charlie, who wishes she could be back in the hot sun, sipping some kind of fanciful cocktail, nibbling at some kimchi or avocado or whatever they eat, and reading Catcher in the Rye, winking at anyone who understands from the book's title that she's really, really smart. You were thinking about having your hair dyed. Jeez, did that cause some navel-gazing issues. You must have sat on that mountainside for hours afterwards. You were wearing that god-awful khaki shirt. I think it had been sold to you as a camouflage net and all you wanted to do was disappear. You loved your brown hair, didn't you? I don't think they even used the right conditioner. It was always never going to work. It was a sealed deal. The phase decided you were born to brunette. But here we are, your conflicting emotions of brunette versus blonde. I think the best metaphor here would be a pepperoni pizza laden heavily with mozzarella and parmesan and probably cheddar. The fight of pepperoni, the nearest shade to brown on this pie, against the three dairy offerings, commonly known in hair circles as cheesy blonde. You set up a war room stocked only of a small plastic table, and we sat on the pepperoni lily pads to discuss your decision. Oh, those pillowy pepperoni pads, they really were a scene, right? So we shot them. Not with bullets, with love with love and a 35mm camera. There was nothing negative about that at all. Boy, we shot a lot of film. I think we single-handedly kept Max Spielman and Super Snaps in business for six years, just snapping away at those moist, delicate, juicy, floppy pillows. Remember how we pitched that production to Google? You know, later they set upon the concept with reckless abandon, first creating a prototype app and later launching it to the world as Google Photos. Those photo processing stores really got the raw end of that deal. And I feel somewhat culpable because we took so many photos of those damn pillows. Anyway, back in London after we invented Google Photos and you had that whole mountainside strop about an ill-advised hair colouring choice in Casablanca, you decided to go back to Brunette and make a call to international trading standards. You were furious. Only you forgot to put money in the slot, didn't you? 
and held the receiver the wrong way up. You millennial. So all you could do was hear your own voice. Man, you were antsy that day. I don't know why. You got your hair back. Anyway, they wanted to see us, so we went down to International Trading Standards. I think they had a branch in Kilburn, right? Which was inconvenient because we were in Borton on the Water at the time. It's a two hour underground, overground, wombling free adventure. Just getting there. What was surprising was that we arrived in London that day on New York Subway Swapsies Day. But man, it felt so good being in the capital after they shipped in those shiny capsules with luggage racks and more hoodie wearing hostiles than is typical on the Northern Line. It was a journey though, wasn't it, of immense joy. Brought us both light, even though your hair was dark. As we talked that day, and you realise that though your hair was murky, your mind shone like a million candles. And that was enough to remind you that in that poolside state, all those days ago in Morocco, you actually made the right call after all. And now you're blonde again, where you should be, your rightful state. Do you hear me? We're done with dying. It's time to live, because blondes have the most fun. Thank you for listening to To Die a Blonde by Dave Thackeray.